If you're thinking about selling your business in the near future, here's a how to sell business in 2021, a very, very quick overview. There's a lot of details to go through. Also, one of you keep in mind, if you'd like the written uh, storybook on all the details of this, uh, Legacies 2021 Business Seller Success Guide, just text uh, BYBIZ USA, B-Y-B-I-Z USA, it's over here too, to the number 22828. Let's go through a couple things out there and talk about in the overview, we're going to talk about buying and selling, focus on value, and then talk a little bit about how COVID-19 affects value. I want you to keep in mind, though, that every business has value, even in a coronavirus area. And I just want to talk about that uh, and get that through that in every economy, there's a value in businesses. People are looking to get out of corporate jobs or they've been displaced. Or There's a lot of different things that, that draw people to wanting to buy a decent business, especially when it's cash flowing money and making some stuff out there. The banks have told me that there's three buckets they look at. There's essential businesses, ones that have closed and reopened like restaurants, and ones that have been permanently impacted. And they're more likely to, to help on the essential ones and then some of the ones that have been closed and reopened. It, it's really valuable. If you can get your business to get SBA pre-qualification, that's going to be a super, super power for you. Keep in mind that a lot of businesses that go in the marketplace aren't prepared properly. Uh, maybe the prices are unrealistic or they're not marketed the right way. I'm not telling this full selling story. And if you look at Forbes magazine showing that 90% don't sell, exit planning saying that about 80, 70, 80% don't sell, and even biz buy sell, which is just one of many places that advertise businesses, show only about one in five or about 20% uh, of the businesses don't sell. I just skipped over a couple of different things and let me go back to it. Business brokering, uh, a lot of states require that you have a real estate license, but it's very, very different from selling a house. And I highly recommend you go to a professional, uh, talk to them about how to sell the business, understanding the valuation. It's done in highly uh, secretive terms out there. Almost every case we want to be confidential. It's very, very different from selling commercial real estate even. And by the way, we sell commercial real estate when it's tied to a business, but we're not out there selling empty lots and that sort of thing. We're selling businesses and we're serious about cash flowing businesses owned by families that are looking to retire and looking or move on to the next thing, but also want to make sure that everything's kept secret. Buyers and sellers sort of want the same sort of thing. Uh, sellers, you deserve the best price for your business. Buyers want the best business for their price. And when you attractively put together a package on a business for your business and you learn about the steps and processes, you can present something so you're showing value and really attract people. There's a lot of people that are looking to buy businesses, expanders, like they might own one or, or several of a certain business and want an additional marketing or a, uh, a manufacturing firm in a different area. Synergizers might have a, like an electrical contracting company and they say, well, you know, a lot of our companies also need plumbing or customers need plumbing. So they might synergize by by adding something to it, private equity groups are looking for things that are bigger, usually 1.5 million in annual earnings, EBITDA is the term, enterprising veterans, people leaving the military, thank you veterans, by the way, for serving our country. Uh, corporate refugees, that was me working for Corporate America for uh, 12 years before I started my company here in 2004, and then visa seekers, people that uh, are coming from other countries that are similar, similar to these two categories in a lot of ways, looking for great business. Um, the five C's, confidentiality is important. Your creditors might say, hey, let's start uh, not extending credit so long out there if you're selling your business. Chain of suppliers, you might want to be tempted to say, hey, you know anybody selling wants to buy my uh, business or whatever, and suddenly they're sharing with all the different competitors uh, that your business is for sale. Competitors might take advantage of the fact that they know your business is for sale and lure your customers to their stores saying, hey, they're going out of business or going away or whatever. Customers might get nervous, and the employees often get a little weary and concerned if they hear the business is for sale. Of course, there's times that you can have a conversation with them, and a few times that we've done that, we've had people very satisfied with that, but there's a conversation you should have if you're going to do that and present it in the proper way out there. There. Uh, people looking at buying a business and finding out how much you're going to sell business for is really key. Uh, the two key factors, people don't always measure it this way. They want to know how much your business has really made. And we know that tax returns and profit loss statements are designed to minimize taxes. And so many times we have to do what we call normalizing those statements to show the true value, right? Because you write off amortization, depreciation. You might be writing a check to your spouse who hasn't worked in the business in several years. You're doing a lot of different things out there that you, you want that uh, uh, minimize your cash flow on it. Uh, and then people are going to measure risk. 
risk. Like, how risky is it that I take over this business from her or him or whoever it is out there? You know, I love to utilize this Jerry Maguire line, and that's uh, Rod Tidwell played by Cooper Gooding Jr. calling uh, uh, Jerry Maguire saying, hey, man, show me the money, show me the money. And that's what people looking to buy a business, they're going to want to do. I'm going to talk about it just for a minute. Imagine $100 doesn't make it on your tax returns. This might not apply to you, but there are some people that, like, have a situation where they don't always have to show all the cash, et cetera. But when you're getting ready to sell your business in the last year or two or three even, um, there's a real great advantage. I'm using a th- uh, $100, but imagine $10,000 as an example. Well, let's say you pay 30% taxes. A lot of times you can end up paying far less than that, but I'm just keeping it simple out there. $100 times 30 or 10,000 times uh, 30% is $3,000 that you save in taxes. And that's a whoopee hooray. I don't have to pay that to Uncle Sam or Donald Trump or whomever doesn't need the money. On the other hand, if your business sells for three times your earnings and you held back $100, you'd miss $300 in earnings. Or if it was $10,000, you'd miss out on $30,000 that you could get for your business. So, uh, you know, it's almost a 10 times ratio given these scenarios. And many times it's much more than a 10 times ratio. So as you get close to it, you know, think about making sure all your Cash shows up on your financial somewhere on the line. There's value drivers. So I'm just going to use a real quick scenario on a couple of different things out there. But I want you to imagine two businesses, same industry. Let's say they've been around for 30 years. They're, they've been doing the same sort of, and they're in the same sort of industry, printing business, manufacturing, it doesn't matter. I'm keeping it simple, netting a, grossing a million and netting $150,000. So two businesses in that same bot, but this company has gone down, down, down in the last five years, while this one has grown from 200000 to over a million in sales right now, which do you think if they were making the same amount of money in the same industry, same amount of time, would people be interested in buying most of all, right? And there's other scenarios. There's like uh, the owner taking long vacations versus somebody that's not taking any vacations at all. Uh, And I have a whole series on doing these just to talk about value drivers, one closely tied to the owner so that the owner is getting all the customers versus not and and it's the face of the customer, etc. So keep that in mind. When you're selling a business and I do this these all these fish in the sea there's literally thousands and thousands of businesses for sale all saying the same thing buy me buy me I'm making a lot of money I'm really really great um, but even if you sort them all out and you go back to um, a couple of different businesses we create what we call a comprehensive business review this OBR is just a, another word for our teasers that we send a quality document out that people can't tell what the business is saying yeah this is really nice but the comprehensive business review or CBR is where we talk about the quality of your business and all those elements elements, those things back in those value drivers where we mentioned the three of them, you know, the direction of sales and ownership of the business, et cetera. We work hard to write a storybook on your business. And if you're going to sell your business yourself, I think you should do the same sort of thing. You can write to us and we'll send you an outline, for goodness sakes, if you want to do it yourself. Our our booklets go from anywhere from 10 pages to as many as 50 or more pages in a few cases uh, for businesses to show this great qualitative value. At the end of the day, we recommend to buyers, hey, think about the business in about 30-70 rule. The 30-70 rule says about 30% of the business decision should be made on the business. This person that's selling their business has to be able to show it's valuable and quality, but at the same time, you need to think about that 70% of what you're going to do with the business. So a lot of people might look at a business that's really great and say, I couldn't do that. I don't want to do that. I have no vision for it. Other people look at it and go, well, you know what? I can take this to a whole new level. And so keep that in mind when you're talking to people when they come to you, when you're doing your interviews with the customers and clients. Um, you know, there's generally eight giant steps uh, about selling your business. You know, they want to see the money. You need to show that. You want to do a valuation. We have a program where we do a great uh, analysis of value and market price for the business and talk about the value drivers. If you ever want to have a quick quick idea of what your business is in the marketplace, we do that for free, but we do a whole process of, of helping people understand not only that, but things they might do to drill value. Organizing your stuff is really, really key. Time kills de- kills deals, and if you have your stuff organized, it's very, very valuable to you on that aspect. Um, putting the packaging together, I talked about the comprehensive business review. Putting the stuff together so once people sign the non-disclosure and we vetted that they're a reasonable person, they who they are, they're going to get this package that helps sell your business. Understand the marketplace 
try and get your business pre-qualified. If you can get an SBA to say yes to it, you save a lot of headache having to worry about are you going to sell the business and finance it yourself, which most people say they don't want to do. But many times, if you don't have SBA financing, some way the business has to be financed. There's a negotiation. That's what we help a lot with as well. And, of course, there's a due diligence. You know, I, I said there's eight steps, and this is even a short overview. There's probably about 130-some different steps we go through when we work with somebody from uh, first meeting them all the way to the process of closing. But I just want to give you an idea. It's a complicated process. If you want to try and do it yourself, that's fine. But keep in mind this takes some time, takes a lot of tools, takes a lot of right websites, a lot of knowledge. And we provide value to help you with that process so you don't have to worry about it. you probably got a lot more things to do besides running your business on a day-to-day -day basis, but that's totally up to you. Look, we've had many success stories. I'm going to share with you a couple of them. This is one where a skating rink where most people think, oh, roller skating people have got to be doing not doing that anymore. In fact, when we sold this uh, about two weeks later down in uh, the two counties below us, one of the skating companies went out of business after 40 years because they said there's no demand in skating. We had a, a, a small market of potentially like three buyers. We had to reach all over the nation and do some direct mailing to find the three different top buyers and uh, so we got a competitive bid between two of them to take over this business. And if you saw the inside, you'd be amazed. But this company almost doubled in revenues uh, the first year of operation the way they did it. And they're a really special group out there. You know, we work with this, which is a very special group of restaurants. Uh, we sold this particular one, the Irish Pub. And I took this one with a rainbow going into it. This is my little uh, Irish uh, you know, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow type of picture. Uh, but this one, we had to go out and find a particular investment group. These people had 25, 30, maybe more restaurants. I don't remember. They had a, a Taco Bell franchise. They had some full-service restaurants in Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. They were moving down the coastline. And it was very, very unique to try and find the right person that could qualify to buy this business. Um, we had an electrical contractor that had developed this incredible uh, lighting company. And uh, we'd gotten a chance to talk to them because they had been trying to sell their, their uh, opportunity. They went to a commercial broker who was very smart, and he looked at the uh, property and said, oh, it's worth X amount of dollars. And they said, well, what about the business? And he really didn't get into doing that. We went back and showed how we, we uh, valued the business, accounted for the occupancy value, and then added to it uh, the land, and we sold this very successfully to a really, really, really great family uh, that moved uh, to the area and needed something that was making strongly well over six figures, et cetera, and made a great success with that. Look, every business has a value even in a coronavirus era, and I just want you to think about that. If you'd like to know more details, you've got some questions, I highly encourage you to, to a text uh, by Biz USA to 22828. We'll say, hey, what's your email, and we'll send you this book which is uh, about a 30-page book on tips and ideas on selling your business, going to a lot more detail. Um, our website has been uh, on the first page and the last page by Biz USA, but our company is called the Legacy Venture Group, and we call it Legacy um, because we're concerned. We love working with businesses who care about what happens after the sale to the business. Um, so uh, Legacy has always been the driving value target in our name and our company. Um, and, uh, oops, I slipped off of that slide. And lastly, I'll just bring this to your attention one more time. This is how to sell a business and share a legacy and get the best price. These were tips and ideas. This is Brian Stevens with Legacy Venture Group and Buy Biz USA. I would love to hear from you. By the way, I've done this live uh, recording, but I did this in a real short format. And I went over things kind of quickly. If you got questions, if you got ideas how I can make this better, I love what I do. I, I created my company back in 2004 after spending a dozen years working with business owners and consulting, development, ideas, layouts from corporate America, and I really get a great pleasure in helping people um, sell their businesses and other people how to end up buying a really great business. So reach out, take care, have a great day, stay well and healthy, and thank you for paying attention. Take care. God bless.